Hey there you guys, welcome back. Today we are going to deal with this lovely Alocasia Macoriza. Uh, this Alocasia I've had for many, many years. Uh, actually, I think it's the first ever uh, elephant ear that I've ever had. And uh, my first year, uh, I started it off growing it in a greenhouse and because uh, I worked in a greenhouse at the time and I kind of set it aside and, and it was my little pet at the greenhouse. And uh, it got big that year. It got beautiful. Um, I believe the leaves, if I can find a photo in my archives, good luck. If I can find an, a, a photo, I'll, I'll post it up in the corner. Otherwise, I'm sorry. Uh, I used to have it as my Facebook profile picture, so I'll check there first. So anyway, uh, it used to, the first year that I had it, it got to be about uh, maybe seven feet tall, seven, seven and a half feet tall. And the leaves were about three, four feet long and about two or three feet wide. They were, uh, they were quite large and uh, it was a stunning plant. And ever since then, it's never really done as well. It would get bigger. The leaves would get to be maybe uh, two feet long and uh, maybe a little bit bigger and, and nice and wide, but, but uh, never the same as the first year. And Macoriza is supposed to be one of the larger ones and uh, it just never seemed to do that. So I'm a little bit sad, but sometimes in our climate, my climate is quite cold, so they don't, uh, they don't necessarily get as big as they should. Um, but anyway, this one here should be bigger than this. And it's in a, a if you have a, a, an elephant ear that isn't uh, getting to its potential, uh, it's not growing big leaves and it's just not growing well at all, and you know that the variety is supposed to get big, uh, there could be several problems that are that are causing that. One, it could be just overcrowded in the pot and it could just be competing for food and whatnot. So uh, if this is the case, you might want to start uh, feeding more often uh, and on watering as well. These things really do suck up the moisture when they're competing especially. Um, two, probably a bigger pot size would be better. This one here is in a, um, I'm going to say a 12 or a 13 inch pot. And that's really not big enough for an alocasia of this size. So we're going to move it up to this pot, uh, which is considerably bigger. And uh, we'll see how it grows. When I plant these in the garden, the leaves do get uh, much bigger. So, excuse me. Uh, so we're going to unpot this right now. And I'll bring you in a little bit closer. And we'll see what the root system looks like. And then we're going to pop it into this. And then we're going to see by the end of the season, the season isn't much, uh, isn't very long now before the end of the season. It's uh, it's August now, so we have all of September, and uh, that's about it. So about two months more of growing, but we should start to see some some uh, some good difference in the the size of the leaf. Anyway, I'm rambling on. Let's just get to it. Grass is a little bit damp. I've been uh, it's been raining all night. Look at those beautiful roots. We know that it's not a problem with the roots not, uh, not uh, developing and, and rotting away, but notice they are twining along the bottom of the pot. So I'm just going to remove some of this older soil, get rid of it. It's been in the soil for a few years. It will like a little bit of a change. I'm not going to take away all of the soil, just removing some. We're just going to pull some of these roots from the bottom just to straighten them out a little bit so when they get to the new home they're going to start growing everywhere. All in all it wasn't as pot bound as I thought it was going to be. This plant is like my baby. I've had it for so long like I've said. Uh, this is just a baby of the original plant. Uh, it's good to uh, to get rid of the ones with the trunks from time to time and just uh, start with an offset or a sucker. I find that the suckers, the baby plants, tend to have a lot more vigor than the, uh, the older plants do. This particular alocasia doesn't like to go dormant. It will, but uh, it, it, really, it really struggles to go dormant. So generally I just leave it in the basement with... Uh, with a little bit of light, with cooler temperatures and just a little bit of light, it comes through uh, just fine. You do have to watch out for 
uh, spider mites and white fly. But spider mites are the ones that are really damaging to this. Just keep an eye open for the webs. Okay, so we've got enough of this torn, uh, taken apart here. As you can see, it's no longer twining. So we'll uh, we'll figure this out. We'll, we'll pot it in the new pot. My goodness, I can't find my words today. Anyway, uh, let's get uh, change the camera view and we'll get to potting this up. Okay, so in the bottom of the purple pot, we've got uh, some paper towel. You might want to use stones or whatever, but I'm just adding some uh, something to stop the soil from draining out the holes. Um, I've also got some slow-release fertilizer. This one is a President's Choice brand. This is just a, a store brand. And then this is some leftover miracle Grow Shake and Feed. Uh, this one is 19612. So this is going to be good for flowers. I wouldn't recommend something with a high... Uh, actually, I do recommend something like this uh, with a high nitrogen level. Uh, this will give you a lot of green growth, and that is what these are going to be doing. A lot of green growth. Uh, this one here is a hanging basket one, 11, 20, 11. Uh, I'm, I, it's just something I have. I'm adding this to the soil and uh, just to give it some nutrients as it's trying to grow. And uh, yeah, no specific reason, just some nutrients. Uh, so I'm going to add that to the soil as we go so that as the roots crawl through, uh, they will get some nourishment. And today I am using a ProMix potting soil. No specific reason, it was inexpensive and I do like the brand ProMix. Uh, I usually buy bales of it for my stuff downstairs. I find that it's a really nice light mix. It's got perlite added in. It's, it's just a nice uh, peat base usually. So we'll just open this up. Should have brought a knife, but that's all right. We'll get in here somehow. There we go. So I'm just going to dump the majority of this bag in. Then we're going to add some of this uh, slow release fertilizer and we're going to mix it around. Just add the whole container. These roots will travel quite quickly so they will eat up the fertilizer in there. Nothing special, just to mixing it around. Take this lid off. All these little measuring cups come in handy later on. Just gonna be very liberal with it. Throw it in, mix it around. It's like making a cake, almost. All right. So I've got all that soil in the bottom. I just want to see how much more soil I need to have in there. Uh, I'll bring the soil level up another couple of inches because it's still a little bit low in the pot. All right, since we added more soil, let's add some more fertilizer. Not following any directions. I'm using a lot of soil, so I'll need a quite a bit of fertilizer. You can follow the directions if you'd like. <laughs> I I throw that to the wind. Actually, if you're doing it for the first time, I would recommend throwing uh, or reading the instructions. So let's see this now. There we go. That looks perfect. So I'm going to try to spread these roots out as best I can, so they're not all in a lump underneath the plant. We're going to try to put it centered. If I was really wanting to do this uh, correctly, I would probably uh, divide this out a little bit um, because there are a lot of plants in here and they will be competing for, uh, for growth. Uh, but uh, I don't really have the space, nor do I have uh, friends that I want to give these to at the moment. It's a little late in the season. Everybody's got their garden planted. They don't want any of these at this point. Maybe if it was springtime, I could give some as gifts for people's patios, but it's a little late in the season for that. So that's okay, next year. So now I'm just gonna fill in around the plant with soil. It's as easy as that. I'm tamping the soil down just uh, lightly with my hands. I wanna get rid of any air pockets that are, uh, that are going on in here. 
some general care instructions for these is they like good light. They, if you live in a really, really hot climate, they'll probably want a partially shaded location. But in my climate, they will do well in full sun or in partial shade. Uh, particularly, uh, morning sun is best. But uh, again, I'm much cooler generally, so uh, full sun is just fine. I like to leave mine in full sun locations. I find that they do really, really well. They love the heat. So uh, when the temperatures are above 20 degrees Celsius, um, both daytime and nighttime, uh, you'll find that these grow the most. Uh, if it goes down below 15 degrees Celsius, sorry, I'm not doing the conversions. Um, if it goes below 15 degrees Celsius, you'll notice the plant will slow down considerably. Uh, so really, in my climate, you only get about two months of good growth. Uh, and then the nighttime temperatures tend to drop. The daytime temperatures stay above 20, and they, they slow significantly when the, the nighttime temperatures drop. Uh, I'm repeating myself. <laughs> they like to be watered really, really well when actively growing. Uh, you'll know when they're actively growing. Uh, you'll usually get a, uh, a new leaf on a big plant uh, once a week, perhaps, maybe once every two weeks. Uh, and in the winter time, you might get one a month, maybe one every two months. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got some soil in my face. Um, so yeah, when I bring them in for the winter time, I keep them on the dry side. I water them when they're completely dry, and uh, and then uh, let them dry out again, and then water them well, and then let them dry out, kind of like a cactus. Uh, and then uh, in the summertime, pretty well every day, I'm throwing water on them. Uh, they really do appreciate lots and lots of water when actively growing, like I said. I think I've covered it all. They like it hot. Uh, they like part sun to full, uh, full to part shade. Sorry, full sun to part shade. Uh, and lots of moisture when actively growing. Uh, they also like a lot of fertilizer. Uh, a lot of nitrogen rich fertilizer. So uh, a lot of times when we're fertilizing the lawn, I'll throw a handful of lawn fertilizer in there with it. Just make sure to water them in. After you do that, you don't want to burn the roots. And uh, yeah, other than that, they're really, really a cinch to grow. Uh, in the wintertime, I bring them inside. In my climate, they are not hardy. Uh, some varieties of alocasia, uh, you can uh, remove all of the leaves and uh, they will go dormant. And then you just pull them out of storage uh, in the spring and then start back growing them as normal. Uh, others don't like to go dormant as easily. So uh, just uh, putting them in a cool place in the house uh, with a light bulb on a timer uh, usually works fine. Or if you have a window, if you have uh, a nice room that's cooler, uh, just uh, stick it in there in front of the window and uh, just kind of forget about it. Just remember to watch for spider mites. They are a big deal with these guys. Uh, yeah, don't forget about that. Anyway, enough rambling. Happy growing, and I'll talk to you soon. pots here. I'm going to split it into three uh, divisions. I could easily put it into, I don't know, eight or ten different divisions because I've got so many different rosettes. I could, I could technically take each rosette and pot it up individually. I don't want to do that though. Uh, so 